Uh, that situation in Charlotte, the situation that has resulted in Tulsa, Oklahoma as well, are just two more examples of uh, those that reveal tensions between police officers and the communities uh, which they police across the nation. We want to bring in former Chicago police officer Dimitri Robertson. He's in Chicago and joins us to discuss it all. And uh, Dimitri, again, with regard to what you saw uh, last night uh, as it played out and, and the direct ties it has to this officer involved shooting, um, it seemed like a slow moving but unavoidable uh, tsunami that just rolled at and then through that community. What to make of it? Well, I disagree that it, it was unavoidable. I think that our law enforcement agencies have to be much more proactive in engaging the community before these issues erupt. And in a lot of cases, folks feel as though, well, this is not my community, this isn't happening in my town, so we don't have to be proactive around building bridges with our community members. And I think that's the wrong approach. But moving forward, I hope that this can be looked at as a model throughout the country to say that underserved communities that have had negative interactions with the police for many years are going to continue to take to the streets and have violent protests when they don't have a voice. So we have to arm them with the competencies necessary and get them involved with the police processes much sooner than when we see unfortunate events unfold in the country. Now, we saw what happened yesterday, and we heard even in the initial aftermath yesterday uh, during the day uh, that uh, for a lot of people there unhappy with what transpired the day previous, it was a question of transparency. It seems as though then uh, any available uh, footage from the body cams and dash cams uh, involved in that shooting uh, could have at least uh, put some questions to rest. Uh, what do you make of the fact that to this point we still have not seen any of it? It's the wrong move by both the police department as well as the state, local, and city governments. This is not the right direction that we need to be going around tough issues like this. I know that there's legislation there now that says you can't show this body cam video until, uh, until, until, un to someone who's not the family member or the victim, what have you. But it's not October 1st yet. They still have an opportunity to engage the community around these things, but it's obvious both to me and to the rest of the country that they're taking the wrong approach around this. And it seems as though they're, they're being a little stubborn around these issues and not just coming forward and saying, well, we understand that this was our policy. We're going to make an exception to that rule, which happens all the time, and we're going to release this video in a timely manner. It also uh, would seek uh, perhaps to lend visual evidence to the idea of imminent threat. Uh, it is something that the police chief uh, there, uh, Kerr Putney, uh, said that as per the video that he had seen, he had no question that there was an imminent threat on the officer's safety and thus the shooting did transpire. But with regard to the shooting itself, Officer Brentley Vinson is on administrative leave, said to be the lone shooter here. There were other officers present, however. What does it say that Vinson is the only one on administrative leave at this point? Well, it's a, it's a dynamic situation, and here's a couple of scenarios. Maybe those officers were second or third responding officers that arrived to the scene after it happened. Secondly, they may have been a partner or, a, or from another unit with that officer that were involved but didn't necessarily take place with the actual shooting. So again, not knowing the full details around the shooting or with this officer and what he was there to do may lend us some thoughts around why that is the case. If you were the police chief of Charlotte Mecklenburg today, what would you be doing? Two things. First, telling my officers to take off their protective equipment and start shaking hands with those protesters and not standing and staring them down face to face. But let me also commend the, uh, the police chief there because what we saw last night were officers standing in the gap, doing what they were supposed to do and doing it very well and effectively. Unfortunately, there were some folks that wanted to riot and cause some unrest, but I believe the police department, as well as the chief and his leadership, handled it very appropriately. But moving forward, we have to build a better bridge there. And if they don't start doing that, they're going to continue to see these riots go on. What do you make of uh, the call by civil rights activists to, uh, for economic boycotts in the city? I don't believe this is a time for further division in our country. I believe this is a time that we need to stand together, 
unify as one voice, one body, and come up with sensible solutions that we can all stand behind. Part of that is on the police, part of that is on policymakers, but it's also on our civic leaders and our community leaders to help bridge that gap as well. Police can only do so much, but our politicians can only do so much. It's gonna take a collective effort for us to get to where we need to be. Again, a very tenuous time there in Charlotte. Dimitri Roberts, really appreciate the insights today. Thank you.